Anyone who has speak to me or knows me knows that Vonica is my favorite character in all of Black Clover. I love this character so much. I really love her personality. I love her magic. I really love Vonica as a character, just the way she's written, her motivation, and overall, she's my favorite character in Black Clover. I really fell in love with the Spade Arc, mostly because of her personality. Her battle with Noelle was amazing, and just how she has the stuff I like about Luck as well, who used to be my favorite Black Bull character until Sora came. I love Monica so much, so I really wanted to try to do my best with this video on how to, you know, basically Vonica could work when Black Clover Mobile when she finally releases and I really hope to just do her judge it because I love this character oh my god how many times have I said I love her like god damn she's a patty <laughs> okay I'm, I'm fine I'm fine okay 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 guys uh, after I let that out this is how Vonica could work in Black Clover Mobile she is our queen Let's Vonica out of the Dark Triad is my absolute favorite character of all Black Clover. I love this character so much, and I am happy to try to do this video following up from my Dante video, where if Dante was in Black Clover Mobile, this is how I think he would work. And now I'm going to do the same for Vonica because she is a queen! Oh my god! Okay, I'll stop. Okay, I'm sorry. So, anyway... Um, yeah, the same rules as my Dante video are gonna follow. If you don't remember what those rules are, let's go over them real quick, okay? So, just like the Dante video, I am not gonna be making up stats for these characters. I'm not gonna make up base speed, magic attack, etc. Because that just makes no sense to me. Because these characters are not gonna be out for probably a good year or two. And to give them random numbers you know does not really make any sense what the point is i'm gonna make up what their kits could be how their playstyle couldn't be and like what banner you would pull them on that's the type we're going with the next rule is i have to come up with the skill page and i have to give it a name i have to also explain the passive of the skill page and what skill will it enhance will it enhance her ultimate her skill too etc this is another rule we i have to follow here just as I mentioned before, we are only looking at passive and kits only. I will not be thinking of base stats. I will not be thinking of how you can buff the character if they got dupe 2 versus dupe 5. Because, well, I just want to make up, like, you know, what you would get if you unlock the character. And it shows, like, what, you know, the lock, passive, etc. I don't want to go over how this passive is going to change if she is a 5 dupe or how... Her skills would it be enhanced if you level them up. I'm not doing that. I'm just go over base stuff. The final rule is I have to give her a class. So either attack, debuff her tank, etc. You know, the standard classes in the game. Well, that's it. I think that's self-explanatory. So now let's go over how you acquire the character. In my Dante video, I said there's going to be a Zagrit sibling banner slash Dark Triad banner. And we're going to keep that here. So all three siblings will be in this banner. And you have a chance to pull them along with their skill page. And just like Dante, we will not be covering 100% Devil Host Vonica. We will not be covering 80% or 70% is it? Whatever. 70% or 50%. This is base Vonica for the most part with animation kind of hinting to what she did in the anime slash manga so that way you get the feel of you know that you are using her devil host form or she's using at least her devil host powers so yeah with all that out of the way let's get over to what class vonica would be now originally i thought she could be like a drain tank but actually i'm gonna make vonica an attacker here i think it fits her better with her character and personality that she's an attacker versus a drain tank Plus, we can still do something with lifesteal while she's an attacker. Alright, so let's get into her ultimate ability. This is a long one, and this is not even all her ultimate can do. Like, honestly, it's gonna rival Hateful Fauna's description. So her ultimate ability should be Curse Warding Magic Decaying World. Obviously, it's because she's the Curse Devil host. So this would be a perfect fit. Now, well, this ability has a long description for a good reason. So, not only will this inflict Discharm level 3 on all enemies for 2 turns, but it will also remove all buffs from the enemies and inflict Barrier Removal on one random enemy. This also has a secondary ability based on how many blood stacks she has. 
Now, blood stack for Vonica is gonna be the same thing as the hatred or hatred stack that Hateful Fauna has. So basically, depending on how many stacks she has, will change the outcome of her ultimate and other sword ability. So, if she does not have any blood stack present on her, she will just perform a normal extra attack, dealing equal to 30% of attack and magic attack damage. However, if there is presence of blood stacks, her ability will change depending on the number of blood stacks she has. Now, she can have a maximum of 5 blood stacks at a time, and each one will change the ability of her ultimate. Keep in mind, her ultimate ability is going to be an AoE ability, so yeah, let me go over what the changes can be. Oh boy, yes, I know there's a lot. Like I said, I took inspiration from Hateful Fauna, okay? So let's go over it. Alright, so if she has one blood stack, she will deal 50% attack and magic attack as bonus damage, inflicting bleed on an enemy, dealing, you know, continuous damage for one turn. If she has two instants of blood stack, she will deal 70% of attack and magic attack damage as bonus damage, inflicting bleed on an enemy for two turns instead of one. If she has three blood stack, she will deal 100% bonus attack and magic attack as damage, inflict bleed on the enemy for three turns. If she has four, she will deal 125% of attack and magic attack as bonus damage after she has already granted herself 50% lifesteal inflict bleed on the enemy for four turns and if she has five full stacks of blood stack she will deal 150 percent of attack and magic attack as damage and she will grant herself 150 percent life steal and she will also inflict bleed on the enemy dealing damage for five turns and the bleed is irremovable for one turn now, I know this is already a lot, and you're probably thinking this is way too much for a DPS character, and why the heck can she, we not remove the blood for one turn? Well, because Charm can just get rid of it. What's the point of stacking up blood stack if once you can get, like, four of them, and they're taking bleed for four turns, Charmy just removes them? The way you're rewarded for having five is not only will she do bonus damage, not only she's gonna heal a lot, but also you cannot remove the blood for one turn, making so Charmy cannot just get rid of it. And the reason why it's going to inflict this charm and why it's going to remove buff is so, you know, it's like in the anime. When she cast this, everyone was weakened, everyone was losing track of their mana. So that way, it's like a debuff and an attack spell at the same time. Now, to balance this out, she will lose all her blood stacks after casting her special ability. So, once that happens, for each blood stack she loses slash remove, she'll grant herself HP recovery 10% per stack equal to 10% of her own magic attack. The reason why for this is because it plays into her whole magic being blood magic. So not only is she inflicting bleed, but she's also self-healing herself. And this rewards you more for having more stacks of blood stack. Oh my god, that's gonna get annoying to say. <laughs> I probably should have named it something else, but anyway, yeah, so this is good to help her survive even more, because this also still drives into being like this drain DPS tank-ish person, so this can also come up with clever builds for Vonica, whether you want to run her like all magic attack, whether you want to run her all defensive to really drive in the healing, and while she's granted herself insane buffs, or just make her a general nuker, this is to help her out and to cre get creative with the builds. Now, I've been saying a lot about blood stack, but how do we get blood stack? Well, let's go to her skill two. Her second skill is going to be blood magic, herd of red beasts. This is going to be an AoE ability, and it's going to be able to apply two instances of blood stacks to self. And if she has five blood stacks present, inflict bleed on the enemy for three turns, and attack after granting self 30% life steal. And for each blood stack she has, increase life steal by 10%. If you have a full five stacks, then this will be an 80% life steal, and it's an AOE. So she will probably get back to full health. This is one way to get blood stack, as by using this ability, or you can wait to have the three blood stack in order to apply bleed. The reason why I'm not having to apply bleed automatically is because, well, I think that's way too much considering like. I want her playstyle to be more like how much blood stacks you can and to reward you for having more blood stacks, you know? So she's gonna heal more, she's gonna flick bleed if you do this ability with three blood stacks. And since this only gives two, you cannot use this ability, Mage Blessing, then get another cooldown by Mage Blessing and flick bleed on the next turn. This way it has to be you have to use other abilities of her and can't just rely on Mage Blessing. Another way to get blood stack is gonna be off her skill one. Her skill one is gonna be Blood Magic Red Beast. This is going to be her single target ability and this basically is going to be apply one blood stack onto self inflict bleed on the enemy for two turns 
Attack after granting self 20% lifesteal. For each blood stack, increase lifesteal by 5%. So this is a single target ability, as I said earlier. I think this is a, a good standard ability for the most part. You can inflict bleed, you get some lifesteal back, and you apply to what yourself one blood stack. Now what you're probably noticing is that this will only give you three, so the way you will get five is you have to use skill two, then skill one, then skill two again to get five, or use skill two, and then skill one three times. And as a DPS, you won't have a lot of health. Yeah, you're life stealing, but that's still not good to like, you know, have this all rely on her abilities because then how are you supposed to get the nuke off in time? They're probably gonna get the nuke off before you can with Vonica. Well, I actually figured that out with her passive. So let me go over her passive. So her LR passive is gonna be this. For each blood stack she has, she grants herself 15% increased damage. If she has two blood stacks present, she will grant herself 10% reduced damage taken. This to help her give us some sustainability and she's gonna be life stealing so it's gonna be hard to kill her to really fit that you know idea that she's using blood magic to make herself more tanky and to heal you know and also if she has three blood stacks present she will increase stamina by 15 percent to make herself faster you know faster is better if she has five blood stacks present she will increase her defense level five to self just to really help her sustain and to live and, you know, to lifesteal even more. Really, just to make overall help her out with her sustainability. This would be really good for Vonica to help her fit the role as, you know, a uh, blood magic user who's also, like, making herself stronger the, you know, more she's fighting, having fun. And, again, lifesteal because blood magic. <laughs> To go along with this passive is her dupe passive, so upon taking damage she will grant herself one blood stack. If she has max blood stack present, she will grant herself immortality for one turn. So this way, you know, you, she cannot just be completely one-shotted, and also this stacks up. So let's say, for example, they combo attack you, like, I don't know, Charlotte and Julius, she will gain two blood stacks. And this will help her sustain and really help her out getting those passive and just getting that max one. So I think it would be kind of dumb if you got the max stats, but then she just died. So we're doing this. And plus, if you have max stacks and you try to like, you know, use your ultimate. If you try to use your second skill, she's probably going to be back at full health. So I think this is a fair way to balance it out if she, you know, as a reward and to help her out. Um, you can only trigger this once per turn, so you cannot trigger it. You cannot trigger it back because, as we know, only her ultimate removes the stack. So you have to use the ultimate once she gets the five. Otherwise, she's not gonna get this back, and then you have to gain them back again. So I think this is a risk versus reward is a good way to kind of say, do you want to use them right now? Do you want to nuke them, or do you want to save them to heal yourself, etc. I think this is really good for Vonica. Alright, so with her two passes out of the way, let's talk about her skill page. So, this is the name I came up with it. Come have fun with me without having it be dirty. Okay, upon attacking an enemy, taking bleed damage, there's a 10% chance to grant self an SP buff plus one. This will be really good since she's going to be inflicting bleed non-stop and can actually bring up like a, a bleed meta potentially. Um, the photo used for it is going to be that one and they're probably going to do something else. But hey, that one looks cool, okay? So yeah, and plus it was the only art I could use without being copyrighted strike. This is going to change her skill one to apply two instants of blood stack instead of one to really help her out even more. So that way you can use skill two, skill one, you already have four, you get her passive buffs. And it, you take damage like one time and now you're at full stack and now you can nuke next turn. I think that will really help her out and make her an overall really good unit. So that's the basis of Vonica covered and we have gone over her entire kit and everything now. So this should make her a really nice unique DPS where she relies on, you know, stacking blood stacks like Hanafano the Hateful. And she gets passive buffs because of how many blood stacks she has. She life steals. So to give the simulation of that little drain tank-ish kind of play style and inflicting bleed on people because she again has blood magic overall i think that would really fit her well as a character and all these should really fit her as you know this kind of crazy chick that just wants to fight everyone <laughs> and also someone who's just gonna step on people all the time oh god how i wish that was me I'm okay okay i i i'm sorry for that okay uh yeah this video took a lot longer to it than i thought but i'm so happy I am so happy to have covered one of my favorite characters on all Black Clover, and I cannot wait till she comes out of Glover. I don't, I don't care how many variants of her they make. I am gonna try to get them all. Hopefully, I don't care if they suck, but that is my queen. 
that is everything. And mostly, yes, because he reminds me of my significant other. Okay, listen, don't, hashtag don't at me. Alright, those do you know. So anyway, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you agreed with anything I said here or you disagree with our kit, please let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for the support on the Dante one. I'm glad that did decently well, and I hope this one does even better, honestly. Now, Xenon will be next. I know he was supposed to be next, but I could not help it once I started working on Vonica because she I just had so much fun creating her kit, and with Xenon, I uh, was struggling like a mad fan. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like and subscribe if you like this, and yeah, stay tuned for when I upload more and I think next video we'll probably gonna head back to how to fix these units because oh my god the Vonica one here to, to make up a kit took me forever so yeah until then I'm Alto I'll see y'all later bye